what is dominant in this scene from V for Vendetta, which I call the, uh, the shrine scene, um, it's the big reveal of the movie where you find out um, the driving force between, behind all of his actions. Um, it's, for, uh, it's for revenge for them making him into a monster as well as um, destroying this lady's life that's in his background in the background. Um, so they are what's dominant in the scene. And I think it's interesting the way that not only is the scene or the frame shot, where he and her are divided almost equally um, in the frame. Um, his face is also divided into twos. And I'm going to assume that this is going to be a reference to the duality of the situation. Um, he knows essentially what he's doing is wrong, but he also knows that he doesn't have any choice. So it is that um, iconic struggle between darkness and light. This scene is beautiful because it is, they've pulled up close to the dominant figures, the man and the woman. Um, but a few seconds ago, you had seen the full uh, that they had pulled back from the full shrine that he had built to her, including the roses that he left um, at all of his murder scenes. Um, and so they basically like filtered out the rest of the world. And when it comes down to it, it is the whole movie comes down to him and her and what he is doing um, to set things right. Because the only reason that she had been punished in the first place is because she happened to be um, a member of the LGBTQ community. As of the E, the question that uh, relates to open or closed forum, I'm not entirely sure if I'm correct on this, but it appears that it is a open forum um, of scene because there is things going on right outside um, the view of the frame. There's another woman there that he's actually talking to while we only see him and um, the other prisoner that he's built a shrine to. As for the framing, is it tight or close? This one I think could go either way, but I'm going to say that the framing is tight because you there is still some movement um, in the frame the, the the it seems to be um, fading back out till you see him and the other living lady beside him so it can't be uh, a, cl a closed a close-up frame because I don't think we would be able to see the picture behind him um, and all the other details of this big reveal at the end of the third act um, all the characters at this point have been completely fleshed out fleshed out um, their arcs um, have almost come full circle we know why he is doing what he has done the other protagonist his female companion um, has faced her own fear and is now um, ready to help him um, of her own free will so this scene is very powerful um, and I don't think the movie would be as intense without this kind of final reveal and this next detail I didn't actually notice until just now while when I was uh, doing the voiceover for this um, video but if you look right in the middle between the woman and V, you will notice that it takes the shape of a V. So putting it all together, basically what I see 
is that it all comes down to this. This whole movie has to do with the trauma that was inflicted upon these two people um, by a government that um, is out for nothing but power, which inter interestingly enough has, this whole movie had a lot of parallels to the era of politics that we have hopefully um, just left. But it's basically everything, the world stops and we see why he is actually doing all of this. And it has to do with love and humanity. And he wants vengeance. And he wants to set all of the people of England free.